So one of the cool things about Python is that you can change the types of variables after you have declared them. So say that you have declared something to be an integer, you can change that to a string later on if you want. This is because Python is a dynamically typed language. This gives a lot of flexibility to you as a developer to write your code, but it also means that your code is much more prone to errors. So in this video, I want to show you guys how you can actually enforce type checking in Python to dramatically reduce the chances of runtime errors in your code. We'll be looking at how to use and install the MyPy library in Python. There's also a very nice VS Code extension that we can use. Don't worry if you don't know what this means yet, we'll look through it step by step. So the first thing we'll look at is type hinting. So you can think of type hinting as documenting your code. Um, so let's say we have some, a variable or a parameter and then just to, to basically introduce type hinting, we write colon followed by the type. So here we're declaring, you know, item that it should be a string. Now, uh, type hinting is it basically makes your code easier to read uh, and also easier to understand by others. Um, and also it also helps, you know, your IDE and also helps uh, your linters if you use them or autocomplete. So for that, I'll just show you what happens if we don't have type hinting. So if I write item dot, you'll notice I don't get any autocomplete suggestions. But if I change this to a string, uh, you'll notice that I now get a whole list of, uh, of, of methods that I can call an item. So you'll notice here that even though we have added a type hint to item and defined it to be a string, it doesn't actually enforce the type. This means that we can actually set item to be two and it would still run without any without any errors so i can run this and it runs without any errors so to to actually enforce this uh this type checking we can use a static type checking tool there are uh, a couple of out there but i use uh, one called mypy you can install it using pip i already have it installed so to run this you can actually uh you can write mypy and then you can give the name of the file and it would tell you uh that there if there's an error so there's an error on line five here since the expression has type int but the variable has type string now you can also install an extension. Uh, there are, I think, a couple of extensions as well. I use the one, uh, this one called MyPy. Um, I'll just enable it here. And you'll notice that it just does the, the, the type checking automatically for you. So you don't actually need to, need to run it through the terminal. And this is just super nice, super amazing, and just, you know, saves a lot of time. So I'll just cover some of the basic type hints here. So the way you do it, so the way you add type hints to functions it is that in the parameters, you just give a colon and then give the name of the type. So that's item is a string and fridge is a list. So for that, you just write list and then I give these square brackets and say that the item has to be of type string. Uh, and then here up here, we can also just say that this has to be a string like that. And we can also add return types. So it's before the colon, you write an arrow and then you just say that this has to return a, uh, a list. So we're just, we're adding uh, an item to the fridge and then we are calling this to upper function on every item of fridge and we are wrapping that in a list. So we're returning a list. And similarly up here, we are returning, we're capitalizing um, the, the name of the fruit. So we're just also uh, returning a string here and this should now uh, work. Uh, so we're adding these and capitalizing them. Now you can also add, so, so there are also other types. So let's say you have something more complicated. So you can also have something like a, um, like a list of, uh, like a list of lists, something like, uh, something like that. So let's say X is a list of lists. Um, and then you can say that this is now a, like that, write some elements. <clears throat> like that and if we give it something else right so if we give it some integers uh, you'll see that my pie uh, actually gives an error here now you also have dictionaries obviously so if you have a dictionary here you can just say that the that the key has to be a string and the value also has to be a string so name john if you change this to something like an integer you'll see that my pie gives an error now, um, there's one more thing here that I want to show. So let's say we have a dictionary where, where, the, where the values are not of the same type. So the name is John. Let's say John has a, that's a very stupid example, I know, but John has a list of fruits. Uh, so, and this, and this fruits value is a list of, uh, of strings. So you'll notice here that MyPy gives an error because uh, it doesn't actually conform to this, uh, to the string here. So in the type hinting, we've said that, that the value needs to be a string. So we can't actually have it to be a list of, uh, of strings. So the way you, you solve this problem is to, is to import the typed dict 
um, from from the typing module it's a built-in module and you actually need to create um, a a custom class so we say my dict and then we just give it type dict as an argument and then here we say that the name has to be a uh, a string and we say that fruits uh, can be a list of strings and you'll notice now uh, that we if we say and then we can just say that uh, x is actually a my dict and you'll notice that it doesn't uh, it, it it no longer uh, gives gives an error now we also have sets and and tuples and they're you know very simple to use so for a set you just write set and then you just give the the type of the of the elements the set, the set should hold and similarly for a tuple you can just give uh, the type of each of the of the elements here so you know if i change this to something to a string uh, i get an error right so what we can also have is something called a sequence and that's in cases where where we want uh, more flexibility so let's say so let's just say that x is a sequence of, uh, of ints. So a sequence is some is an, is an iterable. So it's something. So it's a data type in Python that can be indexed and that has a length. So something like a list would be a sequence. So something like this would be alright. Uh, and also something like a, like a tuple would also be okay since you can index that. Uh, so this would also not give errors. But if I change this to to a set, for example. Um, I'm gonna get an error by my pie. Uh, so it's, it's super cool, super nice. Also, you know, in cases where you want a bit more flexibility, you can use a sequence type. So we also have the optional type, which basically means that you can either give, so X can either be a string or it can also be the none type. So if we pass, if we call my function with a, uh, with a string, it would be okay. Um, if we give it something like uh, none type, that would also be okay. Uh, if we give it an integer, that would not be okay. So right. So we also have the any type, which basically means that uh, that x uh, that the function or, or the parameter can be any any type. Basically, uh, I'm not really sure why why this is useful, but uh, but it exists. Now one more thing that's interesting is uh, defining custom types. So say we have something you know a complicated type. So I'll just write something up here. So let's say we have some coordinates uh, with some x y z positions. Um, where uh, basically, which is a tuple um, with, with three values, all of them floats. And in this case, you know, we want to do something with the coordinates. So we can say that X needs to be of type chords. And here we can say, uh, we can just give it, uh, so we can say that, so we just create some some uh, some coordinates uh, of type of type chords and, uh, and that would be okay. So the last thing I want to cover is something called generics. So just bear with me here. Uh, we'll just say that T is, is equal to type var, and then we give a capital T. Um, and then we just create a, a function where we say that X must be a sequence type um, where the elements are of type T. Uh, and then we say that the function must return T. And then here uh, we can just say that we just return maybe the first element of the of, of the sequence um, so the idea is that we can we can create so the first so it's basically a sequence type um, so, so this can be a list and, and and t basically represents any any type so it can be anything a list of uh, of of, uh, of integers would be would be okay uh, it doesn't give any errors also a list of of strings would also be okay uh, since uh, T, uh, you know, would encapsulate um, the the generic type. So T could be any type here. Now you'll notice here that it also returns T. Um, but you'll notice here that we can't, so even though we have a list of strings here, we can't actually, if we return a string, uh, we would get an error uh, since it's not of type uh, since the return value uh, is basically it, it expected to be of type T instead of a type string. So this enforces, you know, uh, that that the return type must be must be something. So basically, we, it, it needs to be something that comes from within this container. So, so something that comes from within this this parameter that we have given it. So I think that wraps up uh, today's video and I hope you learned something new. I hope you can use some of the things that you've learned here and uh, go ahead and install the MyPy library and also uh, make sure you comment below if there's anything else you would like me to cover or if you have any questions.